What's up YouTube? Protech here, back with another StarCraft video for you guys today. Um, today's topic is going to be mech in 2v2. And uh, before we get into it, I just kind of want to talk about the state of mech and uh, why you're not really seeing it too often. You know, if you watch a stream or if you're playing your, you know, your 1v1 ladder sessions, whatever. Um, mech is it. One of the biggest problems with mech is that it's it's way too easy to counter from a Zerg perspective or a Protoss perspective. And unless you play like really aggressive mech, or um, you know, you're doing a lot of harassing, you know, stuff like that, like giving yourself a, enough time to build up this this uh, this ball. Uh, that's really powerful, uh, but all, at the same time doing it so that the push actually works. Because if you just play like really passive mech, and your opponent scouts it out, it's incredibly easy to counter in the form of Ravagers, Blinding Cloud. I mean, for Protoss, it's just Tempest and Revelation and stuff like that. So, from a one v one perspective, mech is not being played because it's way too easy to counter. And on top of that, in order to make it work, uh, you have to get up to a, a, a three base, uh, six gas saturation incredibly quick to have the right production in order to make it work. And, you know, it's hard to balance that out. So that's why you you don't really see it very often right now. But when we talk about 2v2, it's a little different. Um, you know... Uh, unit interaction between the races can make mech really good and uh, you know stuff like that typically um, in 2v2 when I play mech I only do it in two scenarios one scenario is if I'm playing against double Terran because mech is in Legacy of the Void it's it's not bad against Terran right now it's decent you can get away with playing mech even in 1v1 um, and the only other time that I play mech is if I know that I'm playing against TZ. So those are the only two times that I'll play mech in 2v2. If I know that I'm going up against a double Terran team, and it doesn't matter what my ally is, like he could be Zerg, Protoss, that doesn't matter. He could be Terran, doesn't matter. Um, or if I'm playing against TZ. So you could you can see why? Because mech, I feel, in 2v2, is a lot better against a Terran player than playing Bio. And uh, one of the reasons for that is because, you know, if, for example, if you play against TZ, the moment Ultras come out, GG. That's just like the GG move, you know what I mean? And if the, pl if the, the player is playing mech, you know, and he's playing a defensive style, and you're playing Bio... That Zerg player is going to get up to the ultimate composition, right? Um, but if you play mech, you can put on aggression, you can contain outside of the base, you can keep them off this additional economy and stuff like that. Um, but again, those are the only two instances where I actually play that composition because it's viable, it works. Now, of course, if your teammate isn't very good, then... I mean, this can be said for anything that you decide to do in team games, if your teammate sucks. And also, for the record, what I'm going to go over is from a random team perspective. I understand that if you're playing on a pre-made or you're playing with somebody that you know is good, there are, are various things that you can get away with, as opposed to a random team player who has to carry his teammate, right? So this is from a random team perspective. This isn't from a pre-made's perspective. So, um, yeah, so we'll get into it. I have a game that I played on stream uh, on the 5th, so like four days ago. And um, I, feel like it's, I feel like it's a really good, uh, a good example of how I would play mech when I play in 2v2. Now, it's a little different um, on a map like this where you've spawned in this location because you can go to the gold. So there's a lot of things that you can do that normally you really wouldn't be able to do if you were on a blue. But 
it doesn't really change the fact that I would still end up playing the same type of style. So again, with this uh, aggressive mech, typically what I'll do in this situation, where if I, you know, if I have a Zerg, Protoss, Terran ally, it doesn't matter. Normally what I'll do, nine times out of ten what I'll do is, is I'll do, I'll, f I'll open with a Reaper. Or it, maybe even sometimes two. But in this game, I knew that I was playing against TZ. And um, I knew that my teammate wasn't, like, incredibly bad, right? Like, I knew he was a pretty decent player. So I cut a corner. And I did... And, of course, you can use this, too, if you want. This type of a play. Which is depot gas, barracks, gas on 16. And the reason you can do this is because of the gold base, right? So the mech, the, the aggressive mech style is really good on a map like this. But essentially, really all you're doing is you're opening with a 1-1-1 one, one, one play. That's how you open with the game. Because if you're going to ultimately play mech, you need to have defenses early on in order to keep yourself safe from pretty much everything that can happen. You know, early pool timings, early reaper timings, liberator play, ling drops, uh, ravager timings, and when you open with barracks, factory, starport, you cover all of that. You cover all of that. So if you're going to play mech, obviously you want to open with 111, which means barracks, factory, starport, because then you have the infrastructure already down for your transition. But when you play this style, you need the reactor on the barracks, you need the tech lab on the factory, and then you need the starport. Um, for early game control. You can also apply pressure, which is what I think I do in this game. So, you know, you can see potentially what could have happened here is that this Zerg player could have made, you know, an early pool and gone for aggression. And if I, you know, just went straight into... Hellions and tanks that could leave me vulnerable to like maybe a quick Banshee play out of Terran, right? So it's important that you get this particular infrastructure up So that you're keeping yourself safe against everything that can happen er in the early stages of the game What I like to do and this is just kind of like a stylistic play is I like to go for the quick tank drop because at this time of the game it's if if roaches haven't like crossed the map at this point, like you're probably not going to get hit by a Ravager timing, right? And if the the Reaper count isn't high, or like you know, if the Reapers haven't been harassing you, you're not really going to be in a situation where you have to defend, 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 right? So usually, you know, based on what I see in the early stages, we'll determine whether I go up to a Liberator or I go up to a Dropship here. So in this game, I went for a lib or I went for a tank and a Dropship because they're not applying pressure, right? And my expansion, from my perspective in this game, is probably a little behind. So I opt to go for the... Um, and like I said before, it doesn't really matter how you do this aggression. You just need to do it because, again, you're delaying your expansion. But normally what I'll opt to do here is I'll go for a siege tank and a dropship. As you can see, I, I have my starport rallied to my tank so that when the when the dropship comes out it just instantly picks it up and then this is like literally this is this right here is just the form of harass you can it, it it fucks with your opponent it keeps them on their side of the map you know and with how ridiculous Terran is especially on a map like this where the 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 air distance isn't very far and these are cliffs that you can abuse it just makes for really good harass potential right Whereas with the Liberator, it's stationary. There's not really any really, really good place to put them. Which, I mean, I suppose in this game I could have got away with it because this guy actually just doesn't have anything, I guess. Where are his Marines? So he's only got two Marines. So, I mean, I could have gone Liberator here and it would have worked. That's just kind of the point I'm making. And anyway, so you can see that this guy is going Bio. And what this tank will do is it will allow you to catch up an economy and keep the Terran player 
on the left side of the map, or even the lings. And this is kind of where the, the teammate would come in if you're going to play mech. Like, he needs to 100% be able to deal with stuff like this, right? But you can see, like, even with these lings crossing the map, right? I could just take my tank and I could put it over here and then, bam, what are these lings going to do, right? So this is a really, really versatile open and this is how you ease your way into mech. And, you know, as you as you do this open more often, you, you understand, like, how to control it. Like, it's important that you do damage with this, because, again, your expansion is so far behind. You want to make sure that he's, uh... You're doing something, you're being active. Because you can see, I mean... My second base isn't even done. Now, the other thing is, is that after the dropship, like, regardless of whether I go Liberator, like, if I open with a Liberator or a dropship, the follow-up has to be Viking. Because if it isn't Viking, then you literally have no anti-air. So for example, if he goes for a Ling drop, you need to have something that can push back the Overlord, right? And this is, all of this is so that you can ease your way into a mech composition. So, there's no, like, real build. I just kind of, like, feel it out. So, it's not like, okay, at 49 supply, I lift my barracks here and I build an additional factory. Or, at a certain time, I put a reactor on my starport. I just kind of feel the game out, right? If I feel like I've done pretty good damage, or a Viking comes out, like this, for example, most of the time, that's, like, my trigger to transition. When I know that I, or I feel like I have pretty good defenses back at home and I can't put on any pressure anymore that's like that's like when I decide to make my transition so it's literally like at a different timing almost every game which I feel makes a pretty good player like uh, operating off this is kind of what I was saying on stream before operating off of build orders kind of makes you a predictable player and if you just operate based on what you see I feel like that's a better way to go about it so, like I just said, usually when I have to retreat, that's my, my trigger to transition. So this is, as you can see, I'm throwing up my second factory. Now, one of the basics of mech, it's not like it used to be. Now, if my teammate in this game, and, you know, there's so many different variables, right? If you've got a Zerg ally who's going for mutas, or the, the basic concept is that if your teammate is going air, you don't have to worry about air. In other words, you can just basically forget about the starport and throw up three factories because it takes four gas to produce out of five factories. But if, you're, if your teammate isn't going for any type of sky toss composition, then you're going to need three factories and one reactored starport for Viking production, two tank production, and Hellion production. That's the production that you need off of two bases. Once you get up to your third base saturation, then you're going to want to go five factory um, reactored starport. And again, this, this, this of course is only if your teammate isn't playing air. If your teammate's playing air, you can go up to five factory, and then you can drop two armories at the same time, because you're not going to have to dump that gas into the starport, right? But, like at this time, we can see that I'm making my transition, right? But my, my second base really isn't all that saturated, so obviously I'm not going to want to put up another factory at this time, because I don't have my, my gas is saturated. So the time that you throw that third factory down is when you get those gases and they're going, and it takes a while like, you can't just instantly throw down your factory as soon as you've made the two refineries because you're not reaping the benefit of that gas yet. It takes, I don't know how many returns it is, but it takes a certain amount of returns before you're starting to gain the investment. So again, just kind of like when it feels right. So as you can see, I mean, at this point, you know, we're kind of at a state of the game where I've got really good defenses, right? 
they're not really going to be able to put on any pressure and so I can just work on my economy, get up to my gases, and start to go for the met composition. But, you know, when you play back, you also kind of need to use some common sense, right? If we look at the terrain of the map, we can see that this is a pretty good map for mech. You see, that, like, the attack paths are, uh, you know, aside from, like, this location and, like, maybe this location, this location and this location, every other attack path, like, up here or, like, right here or here or here or, you know, even down here or down here, they're all really, really good because of the way the terrain is designed. They're, they're not, like, incredibly small choke points, but they're small enough to justify playing a mech composition and that's like one of the strengths of mech like being able to encase yourself in your environment to maximize the DPS so you, again you, you kinda have to just use some common sense like if you're gonna play mech you, you really don't want to be playing mech on a map that's like incredibly wide open because it's easy to surround. It's easy to maneuver around the mech army. And what's the weakness of mech? It's mobility, right? So the strength of its mech is that it's really powerful, but the weakness of it is that it's incredibly easy to either get dropped on or your opponent can just outmaneuver you and literally never take an engagement. So when you play this map, you could see like, if, when you're going for a mech composition on this map, it is incredibly important that you build a, um, like a, like a turret ring. And really, whenever you play mech against drop potential or airplay, you really need to have a turret ring literally just, just covering this entire area. Because if you don't, you can very easily lose all your economy, and the most important part to being able to make mech work is defending your gas. Not so much your resources, because... You float a lot of resources when you play mech because the important resource here is the gas. So if you lose even one of your gases, you're going to be far behind. So it's really important that when you, when you play, you either need to do aggressive things to keep your opponents on their side of the map, or if you want to play a macro style mech, you got to turtle up a little bit. And that's the reason why pe that's why you need to do it. But the general, like, the general composition here, like, the, and as you can see, like, once I got my gases saturated, I put, my, I put up my third factory, right? The, the general composition, and you can also see that I don't have a third base yet, so what I'm essentially playing here is an aggressive mech style. This works when your teammate isn't bad, and you know that your teammate isn't bad. Um, but you can see I haven't taken a third base, and I know that... Based on the way that this game has gone, it's very likely, like even though I haven't really scouted it, it's it's very, very likely that because, you know, throughout this game, we can I can see the composition here, obviously. Like, I see this composition. It's like, well, this guy obviously took a third base, so you can either take the third and go for the longer game, or you can use some common sense, look at your side of, or their side of the map, and then determine whether you're going to go for an aggressive mech style or a, a macro mech style. So in this game, I go for the uh, aggressive mech style, which is three factory, starport, um, tanks, and hellions. And um, in this, in, whenever you play Terran against Terran, Vikings are better than Liberators. So in this game you wouldn't want to be going even if even if the zerg players go on mutas what you would do is is you would put a thor in your composition you don't want to be going liberators because if the terran player goes for vikings he's going to shit all over your liberators so you know obviously as the game goes on and you get more gas then you can start throwing in liberators here and there just for the siege damage like the freedom zones but um 
when you go for this particular uh, uh, aggressive mech style against TZ, if you were playing ZZ, you would want to go Liberators. It would just would be better because then it forces them into a Corruptor composition instead of a Mutalist composition, right? So the, 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 the general idea here is that you hit this timing based on what you scout and what you see and the, the composition is really simple. Tanks, Hellions, Vikings. That's it. And then control. And again, this isn't like, this isn't really an, like, this is kind of an unorthodox attack. It's just like playing off of your instincts or just playing off how you uh, feel throughout the course of the game, right? Normally when you play a mech style, you, you really want to build up a ball. You want to build up like a like a strong um, mech ball. But in this game, because of how it's evolved, I know that if we make this push, it's, it's probably going to do a lot of damage. And normally, when I play mech, if I'm playing an aggressive mech style, I'll take a third base, and normally I'll throw it on my armories. Because you always want to have a backup plan, and really, this is any style that you're playing. You want to have a backup plan. And when you go for that 1-1-1 one, one, one style, um, you know, you can see I have a lot of Marines here, right? It's, it's important that you retain this stuff because it just makes it easier for you to get into your ultimate composition because then you can put on pressure like this and oftentimes they're not going to expect it. In other words, everything that we did at the start of the game made it much easier for us to get into that mech composition as the game goes on because this push, this push is not designed to win the game. If it was designed to win the game, I wouldn't be taking a third, right? So obviously these guys have lost, but as you can see, again, you want to have a backup plan, especially if you're playing mech, because if your army dies, it is like damn near impossible to replenish it. It just takes forever, and that's like one of the other weaknesses about mech. Because the whole game with mech, you're, you're building up to a certain point where it's incredibly hard for whatever your opponents are doing to deal with. Like, that's the point behind mech. So if you make these aggressive pushes, you always want to have a backup plan. While you're making the attack, build the third CC, build the armory, etc., etc. Now, if you were playing against um, two Zerg in this scenario, one of the weaknesses... Uh, would be uh, Mutalisk, right? So oftentimes what I'll do is is I'll build the armory a lot sooner, not necessarily to build the Thor, but just that I so that I have it there in case Mutas come, right? So I build the armory, I queue up Liberators, and if I see Mutas, I'll build a Thor. But, you know, there, there was a lot of mistakes that were made in this game, particularly because you know I should have an I should have an engineering bay and I should at this point like right here this is the time where I should be building these turrets because if this attack fails that's all I've got right like I'm only making two uh, two hellions and two tanks at a time but it's not it's not a good like this isn't going to be a really good composition for a long period of time so Anyway, guys, that's the basics of mech. Remember, if you're playing against, you do not want to go mech because mech, it really is not a good composition at the current moment in time. I don't know if that's going to change. Hopefully it does. Um, but if you're going to go mech, there's only two instances where you really want to do it. If you're playing against Terran Terran or if you're playing against Terran Zerg. 
So there you go. If you guys like the video, thumbs that shit up. If you like the channel, subscribe. And uh, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, I will see you with the next video. Have a good day.